Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you especially for not giving me any time constraint this evening. <laughs> <laughs> With Passover coming up, I decided to pass over any physical limitation. So just sit back and relax. This, this is not a sermon. <laughs> attempting to do so. If it is true that his attempt to press reset on our relationship with Russia has yielded nothing but a Putin dictatorship and a farcical, fraudulent election. If it is true that his attempt to push reset on our relationship with Iran and Mahmoud Ahmadinejad has yielded nothing but a tyrannical, brutal regime that slaughters its own citizens hell-bent on acquiring nuclear weapons. If it is true that we will not have budgets that will not be balanced in our grandchildren's lifetime at our current rate of expenditure, and if it is true that we can't even pressure China to have a better human rights record because they own us lock, stock, and barrel, and the debtor can never put pressure on the creditor, then I ask you a simple question. Why? Does the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal both have polls out showing that President Obama would beat the GOP presumptive nominee, Mitt Romney, if the election were held today? And I'll tell you the reason. We in the Republican Party have failed to articulate what we stand for. People only know what we stand against. We are supposed to be a party of values. And America is a land and a nation and a republic that is built on values, but we never articulate them. Does anybody really believe that as Washington retreated past these New Jersey townships in 1775, 1776, that he was fighting with a ragtag group of colonists because he objected to the British taxing our tea? George III gave us taxes that are a tiny fraction of what we pay today, probably just in New Jersey state income tax alone, let alone the kidney I sold last week to pay for my property taxes. Rather, we rebelled against the British because they denied our essential value, and that is that no man is born more royal than another man, that no person deserves to be advanced without the blood, sweat, and tears and the toil of their own hands. Lincoln didn't fight the South because he was going to have unity at all costs. He fought the South because ultimately slavery was a moral evil that betrayed that idea of human dignity. And the reason why Martin Luther King was successful in a civil rights campaign is that he shamed white America into remembering the values that we fought for on those two great occasions. And that's what this party is supposed to be about. We're not the party of the stingy people who want to take away from the poor. We are the party of dignity that wants to empower every citizen to build something with their own hands. That no man should ever feel that he or she is the ward of somebody else. That no one should ever feel that they are subordinate to somebody else. It says right here on this dollar bill, in God we trust, it doesn't say in God we believe. These aren't beliefs. A belief is something of the heavens. It's something that pulls you into the future. I believe it will happen one day. Trust is something immediate. It's here right now. We trust that every person is endowed with dignity, and we are supposed to be the party that upholds it. When I see a 17% shift in in support from women away from the, Demo from the Republicans to the Democrats because women believe that we are in war with them. You can't just blame the media for perceptions, my friends. When your job is to communicate and you have failed to communicate, then you must point the finger at yourself. 
Our party is supposed to be a party that doesn't bash gays, but that promotes marriage. Our party is supposed to be a party that doesn't, that isn't seen just to deny what a woman's choice would be, but to encourage the respect of a man toward a woman. So she's never forced into that decision as to whether she would have an abortion or not, because she's married to a guy who will support her and wants to raise children with her and will create a family with her. Where is the positive articulation of our beliefs? I was honored a few weeks ago to win the BCRO convention right here in this room against very noble and special, I don't even want to call them opponents, I call them colleagues. Blaze Billick is here tonight. He did extremely well that night. He was my guest at my Shabbat table this past Friday night. As we were eating, he was sitting right next to me. He actually slipped some sort of potion into my chicken soup that made me shrink by about a foot. <laughs> you guys remember when I was here last week, I was like six feet tall. <laughs> And I didn't appreciate that, but I'm a forgiving man. <laughs> but you know what I saw? I saw an incredibly dedicated group of men and women like yourselves who come out here day after day to promote the party because you love America and you believe that the Republican Party has great ideas for America. But you know what I didn't see? I barely saw any African American faces. I didn't see a lot of Latino faces. You mean, are we some sort of exclusive club? You mean our values don't translate through to an African man or woman who lives in our area who marched with Martin Luther King so that they could acquire their dignity not as a gift from the white man, but through their own blood, sweat, and tears? You mean our values of dignity don't translate to other communities? That's our fault. You mean the Latino community doesn't feel comfortable in the Republican Party because we sometimes can be errant enough to speak about illegal immigrants as if they are the same as, what, Al-Qaeda terrorists who speak into our country to blow up babies? People should not come to this country illegally. Of course they should. We should secure our borders. But there's a difference between a man who puts a bomb to blow up a baby and a man who crosses the Rio Grande to feed his babies. And we have to acknowledge that difference even as we chart a way to legally and lawfully promote immigration and find a solution. Solutions. Things we stand for. Positive things. Because if we don't, you can kiss this election goodbye. Kiss it goodbye. It is astonishing to me that President Obama, who is an articulate, highly educated, and fine man, but a failed president, because we have a because he's increased our deficit by about four trillion dollars, because there's an eight and a half percent unemployment rate. Because America's global leadership is not as strong as it was, and tyranny, and even the Arab Spring, unfortunately, is now turning on us. Why will he be reelected? It is our fault, because we only stand in opposition to him instead of people saying the positive and inspirational message that is supposed to be our legacy. Do you know why Ronald Reagan won? He didn't want run, he didn't run, and he didn't win with slogans like Midnight in America or twilight in America, or lights out, whoever is last out in America. His slogan was, morning in America. It was a positive message. And it actually attracted Democrats and independents to vote as well. We have to stop any of the hate mongering. Obama is not a Muslim, he's a Christian, and our opposition to him is based on his policies. And we will respectfully oppose them and give better solutions because this country is not in good shape, and the vast majority of Americans know it. We will win over women, because we are the party that promotes the dignity of every person, that every woman needs to be educated, needs to be senators, congresswomen, presidents, because we believe that every person is equal, and that's what our party stands for. It's about no person ever being dependent on another. That's why we articulate these economic policies, because we actually believe that everyone is capable and no one needs to be supported by someone else unless they're in a difficult situation. We will always be there for them. But in order to put them on their feet and give them the dignity to stand alone, because that's their desire and it's everyone's desire. It's how we raise our children. We teach them to be more and more dependent. I have kids who are here for the first time because my kids are now spread throughout the world. I have a daughter who's in the Israeli army who's visiting for Passover. And I want to welcome her because I salute her decision to help a struggling democracy that faces extermination at the hands of the Iranians who are threatening to wipe it off the map. Hezbollah, Hamas, and she gave two years of her life to the Israeli military. I have a son who's holding a camera who just came from Frankfurt, Germany. He was recently nominated to West Point by Congressman Steve Rothman. Uh,
of who I was grateful for the nomination. And I, and, I, and I salute my son's desire to serve this great country as he's serving the remnants of Germany's Jews after Hitler exterminated them in Frankfurt, Germany for the past two years. We need to teach our children service. We don't give them things. When we give them things, that's not love. It's called spoiling them. God bless President Obama. He wants to give us health care. He wants to give us food on the table. He wants to give us subsidies. Mr. President, we want to do it on our own. Give us the opportunity to do it on our own. There is no American king, there's no American Messiah. It's all about all of us doing for ourselves. That's what trust means. We trust in our ability based on God's blessing to prosper. And my friends, in this coming election, let us reach out to people who look different to us. Let us reach out to people who think different to us. Let us reach out to people who come from different countries to us. Let us demonstrate the greatness of America, what the grand old party is supposed to be, what the Republican Party was always meant to be. It was this party that freed people of a darker skin color because their only sin was to be born with a darker skin color. But we are all God's children. We are all equal. And we are all inheritors of the American dream. Help me win in November. Help me win in June, God willing. Blaze is a great candidate. He's running against me, and I wish you all the best, because I have said, and I'll say it again, whoever is the Republican nominee in June, you will have my complete, unconditional support. But let us be values-based candidates. Let us be people who, who, who we can be proud of. I want to just finally say, yesterday, in Paramus, there was another candidate, and God bless him too, and I was very respectful, and he called me an extremist in front of everyone who was there. And I asked him to apologize, and I said to him, I want to tell you something. I will not respond to you with negativity. If I lose, I will lose with dignity. But I will never win without it. I would rather lose with dignity than ever win without it. I will never be that person. Whoever goes into this race, I'm going to come out the same darn person who went in. Unity. 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 When we are together, no one can break us. No one can defeat us. And we will be victorious. God bless you. Thank you.